Welcome back. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That, and today we're going to be building a flip top tool station that holds two tools in one small footprint. Now this is my second flip top and it's got some new features on the locking hardware to make it even easier to use. And the entire cart can be made from just one sheet of three quarter inch plywood and a small piece of quarter inch for the drawer bottom. I ripped the parts to size per my cut list. And if you want the plans with the cut list, parts diagrams, and step-by-step -step instructions, I'll have a link below in the description. Now the secret sauce of the cart is the metal tube that runs through the top and out both sides. Now this supports the tools and lets them spin freely. I made a drilling guide on the drill press to help me keep everything square and true when I drill these holes for the steel tube by hand into the sides. I sandwiched the two sides together so that I could drill through them at the same time and keep the holes aligned, in theory. After marking the center of the sides, I used the drill guide to position the holes. It matched up with the marks that I laid out, so I went ahead and started up. And I tried to keep the drill bit as vertical as possible and follow the guide. But that's where theory and implementation departed. My garage floor slopes, and as I kept the drill bit vertical, I actually drilled a slanted hole. <laughs> a badly slanted hole. Just a bit outside. So yes, I had perfectly aligned sides, which were horribly slanted. So I ended up fixing this by flipping each piece over and re-drilling from the other side using that position guide. So the moral of the story here is don't double stack your sides because it's just going to double any error that you have. And next I needed to make the slots for the locking hardware on the sides. On the previous build I did this with a router and a straight bit. But this time I decided to use a small Forstner bit to establish the ends of the slots and then remove the rest with a jigsaw. Now either way works fine, it just depends upon what tools you have on hand. You can also use a simple handsaw to make these cuts as well. And if the slots aren't perfect, they can always be cleaned up with a file or some sandpaper. Now the base of the cart has a small drawer in it that sits between the bottom and the lower shelf. I drilled pocket holes in the base and shelf to connect them to the sides. Then I cut a small strip of wood to fill in the back of the drawer opening and drilled pocket holes in it to connect it to the sides as well. With my base parts ready to go, I started assembly. If you have a narrow bench like me, then a piece of MDF on top of it gives you that extra little working surface that you might need to fit some clamps like I did here. I clamp the sides and the bottom together and I attach them with pocket screws along both sides. Then I flip the base upright to attach the lower shelf. I used that back piece for the drawer box and another strip that I'd ripped to the same size as spacers to hold the shelf in place. Now, after clamping the sides firmly to the shelf, I attached it with pocket screws from the inside as well. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a tight fit to do pocket screws in a little opening this size, but I channeled my inner 8th grade self trying to pry that stuck bag of Funyuns out of the vending machine, and I made it work. I never did get those Funyuns, though. Now, after that, I pulled the back piece out, and I put it in flush on the back of the shelf. I attached it to the sides using the pocket holes that I drilled earlier, and then I put a couple screws in through the shelf to finish it off. Next up, I started to make the lower drawer. But since you've probably seen me do this a lot, let me go ahead and answer a frequently asked question while I'm doing it. Many people ask about the stability of the stand since it's just a sheet of plywood and the sides are kind of tall. Now this was one of my concerns as well with the original design when I first saw a flip top. And my design was inspired by a flip top that I saw from Woodsmith Magazine's June 97 issue. Yes, 1997. When I was a spry sophomore at the University of Tennessee with a bad hair dye job. Now that design had no drawer and even taller sides, but by adding a drawer to the mix, it really stabilized the stand dramatically, and I've never had any issues with it. After making the drawer and stapling a quarter inch plywood bottom, I mounted it in the drawer opening using full extension drawer slides. I'm doing an inset drawer front, so I set the drawer slides back the thickness of the plywood that I'll be using for the front. And with the outside portions of the slides in place, I installed the sliding arms and then put the drawer in. I used a small scrap of quarter inch plywood to hold the drawer off the bottom and I attached it to the slides in three spots per side. And next I cut the drawer front to size, making it a quarter inch smaller in width and height than the opening. And this is going to give me an eighth inch reveal around the entire front after install. And with an inset drawer, it's hard to get the right reveal spacing and clamp it in place, so I used a trick you've probably seen me use in some other videos. I drilled the drawer handle holes first along with some mounting holes into the drawer box. Then I used a small stack of hotel key cards to space the drawer front evenly. 
And these plastic key cards actually hold up a lot better than playing cards, which I've used in the past. I attached the front to the drawer box through those handle holes to hold it in place. And then I probably had no way to open that drawer. But no worries, I just turned my drill into a key like a good MacGyver does, and then I was in. And hey, if you like retro shows and woodworking, go ahead and get subscribed if you aren't already. That's two MacGyver references back-to-back -back videos, baby. After attaching the drawer pull, I moved the stand to the floor and I flipped it over to attach the casters. You can use longer screws here when they're going to be going into the sides or the back, but make sure to use a smaller 5 8 of an inch screw when you're going only into that bottom sheet of 3 quarter ply. Now the flipping top is two sheets of plywood with some bracing for the locking hardware and steel tubes sandwiched in between them. Now the front and back bracing pieces have a slot cut in them at the end of each piece to hold an eye bolt. So I whipped up a quick tenoning jig to make the slot cuts on my table saw. Now I have a little jig that I use to cut splines in the picture frames that straddles my fence. I just flipped it around so I could use the other side for this one. Using a scrap piece of ply screwed to the sides for some extra height, I temporarily glued a tall backer board at a right angle to the top of the jig. That's all I needed for a quick and dirty setup and you can make one your own really fast. Next I laid out the slot that I wanted to cut in the bracing. And then I raised up the blade, I clamped the part to my jig, and then I lined up the blade with that outside mark that I had just made on the piece. I made one pass and then I flipped the part around and made another pass. This establishes the width of the slot, but it also leaves a little bit of wood in between that I'm going to need to remove in just a minute. I repeated the cuts to make the slots in the other end as well as the other board too. After that, I adjusted the fence a little bit to take away that remaining portion in the middle of each slot, and I ran all of them through at this setting. Now this is going to give the eye bolt a place to nest and rotate for that locking hardware. I laid one of the plywood pieces on my bench to start assembling the top. Now the steel tube runs down the middle, so I laid out a 3 quarter inch gap in the middle of the plywood, and I set one of those inner braces right on the side of it. I countersunk and screwed the piece down, and then I laid the tube down along it so I could position the next piece to secure it in place. Now this will be a tight fit for that steel tube and be just what I need. After that, I could attach the front and back braces that we just cut the slots into. I flushed up the braces along the edges, and then I just countersunk and screwed them in place as well. The outer bracing is finished up by filling in some short pieces between all those boards that we just installed to make sure that everything is solid along the edges. Now in my previous build, I cut more 1x2 pieces and I lined them up exactly where my tool mounting holes were. Instead of using 1x2s, I just cut some plywood scraps to fill in the openings. I brad nailed them in place since they're just going to be sandwiched in there, and they're going to cover a much larger area so I'll be able to put some different tools with different mounting locations. And next up, you can just attach the other side to the top, but spend a little extra time here making sure everything is lined up square and flush. And by a little extra time, I mean no less than five minutes. I mean, unless you're some like wild fly by the seat of your pants person who only checks for square one time. But like, who would do that? The eye bolts that lock the top are held in place with through bolts. I drilled a hole about a half inch deep at each corner to accept the bolt, nut, and the washers for the setup. After drilling the partial holes, I need to drill a hole through the center with a 3 eighths of an inch bit. But I learned my lesson from the other debacle, and instead of drilling straight through both sides at once, I drilled until I hit the slot at each corner. Then I flipped the top over and drilled through from the other side and out the first hole. This gave me straight holes. And before attaching the top to the base, I rounded over all the corners of the exposed edges with my router. And then I sanded the rotating sides of the top to make sure everything was flush and smooth. And finally, I finished up by applying some water-based polyurethane to all the parts for some protection before assembly. Now, putting the top on the base is a lot easier with the locking hardware installed, so here's a look at how that works. The eye bolt is captured by a bolt, a couple washers, and a nut that's going to hold it all tight together. I install those bolts, lock them all in place with my ratchet and wrench, and then I put on fender washers and a knob on the end of each eye bolt. Now I can easily put the top on the base using the locking hardware to give me an extra set of hands when I put it in those slots. And this also lines up the top for an easy install of that steel tube. I push the tube through and even with my errant holes in the side, it fit right in. Now I wanted about 3 eighths of an inch of the tube sticking out of each side. So I flushed the tube up on one side and then I marked the thickness of the piece of plywood on the other side. So then I could just cut it to size with a recip saw and a metal blade to get that right sizing. 
but without it clamped, it was like trying to sawzall jello and it was just flying everywhere. So I put a vice clamp on the tube and then clamped that clamp to the side. And that worked like a charm. I'm digging this whole clamp a clamp technique that I've been using a few times lately. I made two plywood cap blocks to cover the exposed steel ends. This also gives the tube a little bit of extra support for when it's spinning around. But to really lock the steel in place and make it one piece with the top, I drilled some holes through the top and into the steel tube. Then I countersunk the top of the holes and drove a screw through both parts on both ends. Now we've got a flipping flip top, but I wanted to make some improvements to the locking hardware to really make this one a little bit easier to use than my previous build. Now there were two nuisances with the locking hardware. First, the fender washers floated around and had to be moved outward sometimes to re-engage the locks. And second, when flipping the top, the bolts would sometimes flop out and catch on the sides. Now neither were major issues, but just annoying. So to fix the fender washer issue, I decided to integrate the washer in the knob into one part. I filed down the knobs to get a flat surface to connect the washer, then I scuffed up the fender washers and, and I epoxied them on right to the knob. Now just be careful not to get any epoxy in the threads here. After clamping it and letting it cure overnight, it worked perfectly. No more floating washers to worry about, and it's all one piece. Now the idea for fixing the second issue didn't come to me until I had mounted the tools. Let's take a quick look at the planer from Jet that's going to be going on the top. It's their new 13 inch bench top planer. It's got a two horsepower motor, a two speed gearbox and a segmented head with 24 high speed steel inserts. And I used it extensively in the last video where I built a coffee table from rough walnut lumber. It's performed great so far and I'm looking forward to using it for many more projects. I'll have a link in the description where you can find out more about it and thanks to Jet for sponsoring this video. Now the Jet planer doesn't have onboard cord storage like my last planer did. So I used a two and a half inch pocket screw, a small section of quarter inch tubing and a quarter inch fender washer to make a set of couple cord wrap posts. You could also make some little L shaped wood scraps and get the same thing. Anything just to have a little spot to wrap your cord around. I flipped the top over and I put my next new addition on the other side. Now this is the Craig Foreman pocket hole machine and I am pumped to put this thing to use too. But as I flipped the stand over, did you notice me pushing that bolt back in? That's exactly when the idea hit me for the second fix. I grabbed some small neodymium magnets for the job. Now these were about 5 16 inch round and eighth of an inch thick. I drilled a recess for the magnets right next to that slot for the eye bolt. Then I scuffed up the magnets and I used some more epoxy to set them in the wood. Now these magnets are really small but it was just enough to keep the bolts in place when flipping the top over and I'll never have to worry about that again. Now these two hardware upgrades are easy retrofits so if you've already made a flip top you can put them into place. And if you've not made one yet, it's a great addition to save shop space, and I think you're gonna enjoy it. Hey, if you want some other shop storage projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right there that can really make your shop look great. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.